How well do you remember the city you grew up in? Do you have vivid memories of your neighborhood? I recently went on a journey back to relive those memories. I grew up in Madras in the early 70s and I have fond memories of cycling with my friends to and from school, often stopping at the marina beach for a quick snack or a quick game of cricket before homework. The streets rarely had many vehicles. I can still smell the fragrance of the incense from the temple and the filter coffee from the street stalls. The home was a refuge from the heat. The floor always felt cool on the feet and the ceiling fans provided all the comfort we needed. The romance of my stories motivated my daughter to join me on a trip back to my city, now called Chennai. As soon as we landed, we were caught in traffic for an hour and a half. The foul-smelling, toxic air prevented us from lowering the taxi window. And as we were being welcomed by our friends, we were quickly steered into air-conditioned rooms. I'm not sure my daughter will ever believe the stories of my wonderful childhood. When we look around us, what sort of future do we see? A future where air conditioning is on throughout the day because of intolerable heat? Not to mention frequent power outages because of the grid being unable to cope. A future where water is as precious as oil coming to us in tankers from far, far away. A future where, with or without COVID, wearing a mask will become a necessity. You know, in spite of all of these issues, there's little doubt that cities are places of great opportunity. And inward migration to cities will continue at a rapid rate. But at the same time, the future will be rather bleak if you continue with business as usual. I feel we are at an inflection point, not just for Chennai, but for all our cities. But it's not all bad news. Over the last decade, working for the World Bank IFC, I've traveled to more than 100 cities, collecting data, analyzing innovations to see what has worked and what has not. These are some of the more inspiring solutions I have seen. These experiences and observations have resulted in us creating a solutions-based tool called Apex. Apex provides you with information in real time and demonstrates the enormous potential of incremental improvements. It proposes measures in four key sectors of the city. Built environment, public transport, water supply, and the one thing that plagues all our cities, thrash or waste management. I'm using Chennai as an example, but please feel free to log on and select your own city. As you can see, Apex predicts the resources that will be used by your city in the future if things continue as they are. You as a user can go through actionable solutions that will lower the future impacts within each of the sectors. You have all of this information at your fingertips and the complexity has been greatly reduced so that anyone can use it. For geeks like me, Apex also has the ability to show how much each measure will cost, how much it will reduce in terms of carbon emissions, and even how many jobs it will add to the local economy. So that you're able to understand the solutions better, here are three examples that have worked well and show great potential for many cities. The first example is about the built environment and energy use. This is Freiburg, a city in Germany, and almost every roof is covered in solar panels. In Chennai, we are much luckier as we have twice the amount of sunlight. Let's say that by year 2050, every household in Chennai decides to install solar panels, much like Freiburg. There will be 34% drop in the amount of electricity consumed. This has many indirect but substantial benefits to your quality of life. Firstly, your electric bill will be much lower. You'll have air that is less polluted because generating electricity from coal causes pollution. And finally, quite importantly, you'll be able to use less of the finite resources of the earth. The second example is to do with public transport. Rapid economic growth in Shanghai led to disastrously high levels of pollution due to rising car ownership. Of course, we all know how the Chinese have invested heavily in public infrastructure, but what is less known is that over the last decade, they've established dedicated bike lanes, electric vehicles have been incentivized, 
And you know, at the same time, they've limited the number of new cars allowed on the streets, which has ensured that there is much less pollution. And all of this makes cycling feel less like hell and more like an exercise. So how would Chennai benefit from such interventions? It will mean 54% decrease in the distance traveled by private vehicles, less time stuck in traffic, better air quality, and more space for pedestrians and our children to play outdoor. Finally, an example that shows good water management. I was amazed to see this poster at a bus stop in Singapore, which as you know, is a small island surrounded by saline water. This picture was taken in 1965. Today, Singapore has managed to create interconnected catchments of rainwater along with superbly managed system to reclaim wastewater or sewage water. They are heading towards water self-sufficiency, which is no small accomplishment considering their geographic location. If we did the same in Chennai, by 2050, water security will increase by 40%. How will this impact you as a resident? Well, firstly, water will flow freely through your taps when you want. It'll be much less expensive and it'll be much cleaner as it's not being brought in by tankers. Some of these solutions might seem bigger than you and some of these issues might seem insurmountable. But really, ultimately, policy is actually driven by the people. If you want your city to be green and more livable in the future, the time is to act now. Now! But how, you might ask? Can you meet with some of your neighbors? Look at the information that is available through tools such as Apex. Armed with information, can you come up with simple, workable vision? Can you take this to your cooperator, your policymaker as a group? You know, even if there's no immediate change, information that is evidence-based and compelling will stick and it will motivate. It might be complex, but it needn't be complicated if you have the right information and the right solution. I, for one, plan to retire in Chennai in 15 years and three months approximately. I aim to do all I can to ensure my grandchildren visit me, not only because they appreciate my company, but because they love where I live. Thank you very much.